Hey there guys and well welcome to FP1 and today we've got the launch of Red Bull's title challenger for the 2020 season and oh boy is there a lot to talk about. So if you haven't seen the other videos on the channel just yet I've been uploading just sort of analysis, analysis videos to keep the aerodynamic design of these 2020 Formula 1 cars. I'll leave them all down in the description below and obviously stay tuned tonight for that Renault launch. Hasn't been launched as of recording time so I might have to get that video up a little bit later on but yeah that will be up there and I'm kind of looking forward to how they're going to change their car. But let's get to the matter of how and then look at this Red Bull car. And yeah, a lot has changed. I kind of looked at it initially and thought it just looks kind of like the 20, uh, 2019 one. But in closer detail, so much has changed and lots of new technical innovations on here, which I would like to talk about. So let's start then at the very front of the car and looking at this new almost thumb nose. I guess you can't really call it a thumb nose anymore. Obviously, Red Bull have pioneered, I think for the last two or three years, it's almost cut out in the thumb nose to act as the S-duct in intake. Uh, and for those who don't know what an S-duct is, I explain it in their Haas video, so you want to go check that out. But uh, in short, it's basically an S-shaped tube which goes through that front wing, comes out a little uh, in or exit nozzle, Just you can see it just before the uh, number 33 on these images that I'm putting on screen at the moment. Uh, it's a lot smaller this year actually, uh, for some reason. I wonder if that's just to maybe direct the flow more efficiently and uh, to more precisely, I'm not too sure on that one. Uh, but looking at this, it's a completely new design, looking at the way they've taken this intake in, instead of just one kind of, you know, hole, we've now got six. And obviously we've seen other teams try and be three or four, but this is quite a radical and quite a new design. It'd be interesting to see if any, any of the other teams pick this up. I don't think they will though. This seems very, very Red Bull, very, very Adrian Newey as well. Uh, also looking at that front where you've got almost these scoops, which I think Mercedes pioneered back in, I believe it's 2017 when this new technical regulation came out. Uh, again, this is basically just to direct the flow up towards the uh, top of the car and maybe also into an S duct towards the uh, in the underfloor somewhere. Not too sure. Can't really see from these images at the moment. The front wing itself looks very, very similar to what Red Bull finished with at the end of 2019. No cutout, interestingly, at the end of the end plate, which we've seen on the Haas car, uh, which is a bit strange. But we have kind of got this uh, almost slanted end plate towards the end, which might be a little bit new. I'm not too sure on that one. Wouldn't surprise me if we see that cutout returning before the first race in Melbourne. That remains to be seen, though. So moving back to the barge board section, again, very, very new innovations here. I'm looking just at the overall shape of it. I think we have got some of these boomerang wings again, which McLaren obviously pioneered last year and have been accepted by, I think, the majority of the teams now. Uh, looking at the uh, overall intake on the side pods, they look very Ferrari-esque from last year, which... Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that was quite efficient. The wing mirrors, again, they're coming. They're not coming from the uh, main structure of the car now. They're coming out from the side pods. Can't remember whether they did that last year, but I imagine that gives them an extra fairing as to push air back towards the rear of the car and the rear axle and the rear wing as well. Now, going over to the air box, and one thing I forgot to talk about on that Haas video was they had a little fin uh, just below the camera mount, which again was just, I guess, to push air back towards that rear wing and make that rear wing really, really efficient. Red Bull have done things a little bit different, and it's a bit hard to see, but just below the airbox intake itself, they've got a very similar fin, so a lot lower down than the Haas car. I guess it gives a little bit more maneuverability as to where they want to put that air and whether they want to send it down maybe towards the uh, diffuser section of the car, we're not too sure, but... Uh, very, very interesting, something that, again, no team has really done yet, so well, remains, yeah, I guess it remains to be seen whether other teams pick that up, but um, or maybe even pick that up later on in the season, and all the teams will be looking at these cars now and seeing what teams have done differently. Uh, also, looking at this shot of just the show car we got, now we've got a bit of a high-res image of it, you can really see the just how brilliant that front nose cone is and how complicated it is as well and all these different intakes which I imagine will be going to different areas of the car just to maximize that airflow as it's going and into the underfloor and perhaps into that air duct shape as well. Now looking at the rear wing, the rear wing is a bit of a weird one for me and I'm going through these images and I don't believe this will be the rear wing that they launch uh, at testing. I think it looks a little bit too simple, there's not enough cutouts on there for me. I think it's almost, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure about that. If you compare it to the Haas car, for example, their rear wing looks a lot more complicated, a lot more um, cutouts on the end plate. So I'd be interested to see how that changes through testing. But um, yeah, the rear wing, it's, it's a, bit, a bit of a weird one, really, because the rest of the car is so new, I guess, in the way we've got a new front wing, we've got a new nose cone, we've got a new whole nose section, new barge boards, and the floor as well, actually. I forgot to talk about the floor. You've got a few Vortex uh, generators on the base just below the uh, R in the Red Bull sign. Uh, you can see four of them coming up from the floor. Uh, that's, again, just to push it out, hopefully outboard from that rear tyre. 
Obviously, that air hits that tyre. It's not particularly great for the drag of the car because, obviously, that tyre is spinning and it creates a lot of turbulent air, which will slow the car down. So if we can get the air moved around the outside of that tyre, then we're looking for a much faster race car, a lot less drag being generated. So that's what those vortex manipulators are, trying to direct the air outside from the tyre. And you can see it also on the floor, trying to move air maybe inside on the inside face of the tire there as well they were just my two cents then on the red bull honda for 2020 what are your thoughts down in the comment below obviously no launch livery this year we uh, have had that for the last couple of years but i'm quite happy not getting that almost fake teasing that you know this is how good our car could look but we're gonna go back to the standard livery anyway the standard livery is okay i mean i'm not a massive fan of the map but that's beside the point if it's quick it's quick right so yeah what are your thoughts on the new car do you think it will be the car that might just bring the fight to Mercedes this year? That remains to be seen. Hey, well, who knows? But yeah, stay tuned for that Renault video later on today, and I will see you guys in the next one.